Hello, hello, happy Wednesday, everyone. And you are watching the live stream of Texas Book Talk, which happens every Wednesday at 5.30 Central. And I bring on some really great guests, some authors uh, in Texas and outside of Texas, uh, and get to share with you their works, what they're doing, and uh, talk to them a little bit. Get some Q&A. Um, if you're watching this live on any of the social media accounts, and you want to ask a question, please do, and we'll try to answer that um, on screen. But um, hopefully share with you some writing tips and just give you a little boost for your Wednesday, your midweek. And so this week I'm bringing to you Andy O'Brien, who is um, an executive coach and the author of WTF, Was I Thinking, Family Business. So this is a little departure from the last few weeks. I've been bringing you fiction and fantasy and urban fantasy, paranormal stuff, werewolves, there's no werewolves that I know of. This is actually real <laughs> coach talk. And it is, um, it's, we're going to find out a little bit more about his book and about the, the keys and the things that he uses to help families and businesses be successful in every way, holistically, um, and also dig a little deeper into his process as well. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Andy. Hey, Andy. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. And that was so kind of you, uh, yeah. your intro. I, I'm thinking we should go to werewolves. Okay. We could talk about werewolves. I mean, you could have a werewolf family, werewolf business. So, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, whatever. I'm open, you know. Exactly. Like, I love werewolves. Let's just figure that one out. <laughs> and I won't freeze on screen today. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Okay, well, listen. Okay, I want to hear about your book, but maybe also I would love to hear the kind of story that leads up to this book and the evolution and like kind of how this came about. Oh, that is a great question. So if I start crying on screen, um, I have tissues, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> no, I, um, so about the journey to the book just really is about, you know, I grew up in a family business. All I ever wanted to do was work in the family business with my dad my grandfather, you know, it was, it was such a great upbringing being in the family business and just as a childhood. I mean, it's so interesting hearing about, you know, I, what, what I did is exactly what my dad did, you know, four or five years old is exactly what my son did and is exactly what his son did running up and down the ramp, causing chaos because we were in the moving business. But as, as you know, we transformed from, working in the family business and in the book, you know, I call myself an SOB for all of you that are about to freak out. It's son of boss. Um, and so, you know, it was all great until it wasn't. And so as I transitioned out of my dad's business, you know, it was his business, his name and my aunt's name was on the marquee. My name wasn't, even though I thought it was, you know, I was a typical 22, 23 year old, knew everything, just ask me. But when I transitioned out of that business and then fast forward to a career in owning three, this is our third business, um, I had, my clients kept telling me in the executive coaching, business coaching world over the last 14 years, like, man, you should write a book. Man, that lesson was great. Look what it did for our business and look what it did for this. And so one day my assistant sent out an email like, hey, if I was going to write a book, what do you think I should write about? And so all of my clients sent back all of this great information and it was like, oh, this is gonna be so much fun. And I'll tell you, it freaked me out. It really? totally freaked me out. And so, you know, you put me in a room, pull up four or 500 people and give me a subject and I will go up on stage and I will rock that. I will educate, I will enter entertain, and I will make sure we have learnings. But I tell you what, I put myself, it took me eight, seven and a half years to write this book. Because every time wow. I sat down in front of this computer, I freaked out. Mm. I literally froze. And every, like, oh, here's the title. You should be able to blah, 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 blah. And I went, blah. And I just sat here. And so how did you get, how did you get past that? Because I feel like a lot of people who are watching, who have maybe gone through that process, who have been like, I have this great idea. I have this title. They've done the same thing that you did, sat down. And then they're like, and nothing. 
Like yeah, how... goose eggs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I had to, I had to take a, a a pill of my own that I tell my clients all the time is sometimes you need to ask for help. And one day I was on a call and um, I was talking to one of my um, Roxanne and she's one of my old clients. She's my wife's dearest friend and her and her husband are our dearest friends. And we go, we travel together and she's a transformational change expert. And she's, and she's just started asking me questions. And I was just like, Oh, I can't write. I, and I, you know, I told her the story and she's like, so she asked me like four questions and I went on and on and on and on. And she's like, and that's how you write a book. I'm like, huh? And so what I did is I backed into it with those said clients that had sent me a title and I said, can I have your help? And I did a zoom where I had them and I basically ghostwriting interviewing me and answering the questions that they had. And then once we had the framework of it, I was able to back into that like, oh, because sometimes, you know, as a writer and as a coach and as a human being, the filter between my brain and my fingers is broken. Like, so I had to, like, I, it's it, I, all joking. It's like, I, some people were like, are you having a stroke? I'm like, no, why? Because like there's missing sentences, missing parts and pieces. So when I was able to go back through and edit it, it was literally freeing because we had the data points. So then I took it one step further and I contacted a friend of mine who was in the ghostwriting, Holly, and she was able to kind of help me connect the framework of what I was trying to do. And then, you know, we went from there to a publisher and then to a publisher to our PR. And it, it, it was really interesting. I, I speak freely. I, I believe in 100% truth. And if the way I talk offends you, that's not my purpose, but it's the way I talk. And I won't judge you. Please don't judge me. But I wrote it the first time and I was writing it to be politically correct and make sure I didn't offend anybody or, you know, everybody was my friend because I'm a people pleaser. And it was so funny because I sent it to the publisher and the, and the gentleman who bit it, he looked at me and goes, who wrote this? I'm like, I did. He goes, did you write it for you or did you write it for everybody else? I'm like, well, I said everybody else. He goes, go rewrite it. Mm. So it's been a painstaking, not anymore, but that first seven and a half years and the next, you know, we started putting a pencil to paper in 2021. It was hard. I had to finally eat the pill and go, you know, I need help. I need to ask experts. I need to go and talk to folks like you have published it. And, and I hadn't done that. And I think that there's a thing. So, you know, you know, there's this process of like, you have the idea, you, you know, like if you were doing this as a course, if you were doing this in as a you know, people, someone brought you on as a speaker, you would be like, no problem. Boom. I'm going to go through, you know, I'm going to share with you the thing that I want, that I believe in, that's going to change your life. That's going to change your business. But like the process of making it into a book is a different thing. And so like, I think that's really valid that like you, you have to reach out for help and, and, and that's not a weakness that's recognizing your strengths and, and understanding that you can't, you know, not everyone can do all the things. Um, no, but now I, I couldn't. I, yeah, but okay. So, but you did. So now I want to hear what is your book about? Like, I would love to hear like, what, what are the things, what are the strategies? What are the things that you packed into this book that are going to help people like other people? Oh, that read? that's a great, so WTF, um, for those of you that love acronyms, I prefer to it on media as what the family Let's not get everybody in trouble. So what the family um, was I thinking is, is the common line. So over the last 14 years, you know, coaching family businesses, going and working hand in hand with family businesses, that is the theme that I hear over and over and over again. So the, the book is about, it's, it's full of humor. Um, maybe it's just funny in my head, but it's full of, real life stories and there's 15 steps in there if you follow these steps it will help you move your business forward especially in the family element so you know we start out with let me tell you how i got here right i joked you know i am an sob um, i'm a son of a boss i grew up in a family business i grew up with 
you know, I'm the fourth generation of an entrepreneur in our family. And I look at my dad's journey. I look at my grandfather's journey. I look at his journey before that as immigrants coming here to the U S and the journeys are not so different, even though they're scattered over a hundred years. And then you look at the clients and the family businesses that I've helped. And, you know, whether you're a husband, wife, a brother, a sister, a, a, a cousin, um, and all variations of that, some of the common themes that I talk about here, and, and I'm sure you can relate this. I mean, family dinners, Easter, Christmas, um, I mean, let's just joke a little bit. I mean, you bring up politics at Thanksgiving, you're bound to have an empty Christmas table because it, it, it happens. Well, now add profitability, add profit, add, add, add um, oh, employee retention, add some operational effectiveness in there. And you got you have a mixture of Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter of a train, train wreck on top of a train because sure. believe it or not in family businesses, everybody takes a side. Everybody does. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So it, is it right that your book, I read somewhere that it was 15 steps, 15 yes. to yeah, help, yes. to help families. So your goal is to help other people is not to say, don't do a family business, but oh, absolutely not. I, I am, I am, Go, sorry, go ahead. I get so excited. Yeah. I apologize. No, that's totally fine. I mean, like I'm filling in the blanks as I go because I don't have a copy of it with me. But like the idea that you're um, you're helping other people kind of get past the stumbling blocks, ease things so that it can be, you know, something more profitable, something more enjoyable, that it's not such a stressful situation. Um, so maybe if you want to yeah. talk a little bit more about maybe some of that process. Like yeah, that's a great thing. So yes, you hit it right on the head. I am currently in a family business with my wife and my son. Okay, so let's fast forward. The, the reason that we put these 15 steps is because family businesses, you look at the backbone of the United States, look at small business as a historical event. Um, we know that Economically, small business has driven economics for the last 150 years. No questions asked. So we know that. So I'm telling you not, not to do it, but let's put some parameters in place that allow you to have some success, right? So the 15 steps we start with is boundaries is number one, right? We can sit here and we can talk about cash, cash flow forecast, revenue, profit, net income. We can talk about all the stuff that's down, down in, the, you know, one foot off the ground. But the first thing you have to start with is some arrangement and boundaries within the family, right? We have to, somebody has to be the adult. And I know that sounds really childish to say, but at some point in time at Christmas dinner, somebody has to say, hey, that's not the conversation for today. Right, like uh, yeah, let's you have to have a, a a break between yeah. family. Even though you are family and business, it is business. It has to, you know, be put to bed. It can't always constantly. It can't, yeah, because that's what ends up happening. And you talk about wedges. I mean, think about it. I, I remember being in the family business, and when I was leaving, one of my other cousins who thought well, he was always the pot stir. And he, and it was, it was a painful because I was the only namesake in my dad's business, mm -hmm. right? I was the last of the O'Brien name that was in it. Not because I was the best. I just happened to have the name, but he was really good at right in front of grandma. Let's say this. And then the whole dinner just blew apart. The entire thing did. So the reason we start with boundaries is because operate, you know, you look at boundaries and then you look at positional agreements. Like what is this person going to do um, when you have children? How do they answer to other people other than you? Because, and then the third part of that is how do we remove dad, mom, son, lovey, oh, come here, princess from the work world? Because now you have all this nepotism stuff because it's not business. And the yeah. other big thing that we talk about steps is when you have other business owners, so whether you're a 100% owner, 50, 25, 10, I don't care what it is, 
But when you have executive level meetings, they have to be that. And and so many business owners, uh, let's talk about husbands and wives or partners, right? Whatever your flavor is for a partnership. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, including me, has difficulty with decisions that our significant other or partner has, right? We just do. It, it causes us, we have these little triggers. Fast forward, that stuff gets drawn into the board meeting or the executive level meeting. And then the meeting goes immediately sideways, immediately sideways. And then what do you do? Sure. Okay. So, yeah. yes. Okay. So, um, I want to make sure we, I don't know if we're going to get through all 15, but maybe you could highlight some of like the top ones that you're like, and also I'm going to share while you're like, let me show, I should have done this a little bit ago. Oh. This is the cover of the book, which is really great. And even the dog's involved. So the dog has <laughs> in his family business. Oh yeah. That is um, great. So I will, I will, I will get to the point quicker. So thank you. It's so funny. I get so excited about these chapters. Oh, no, I, I could, it. I could bend your ear for hours, hours and hours. So um, boundaries is for sure. Number one. Um, number two, we talk about is alignment within the organization. Are we all, you know, it's like if, you know, if you put a cup in the water and everybody's rowing in the same direction, the cup goes in a circle. Well, when we talk about alignment, it's, are we all going for the same goal? Um, let me just be crystal clear about this one. I'm a full-blown capitalist. I think business owners should make as much money as humanly possible. And then they can decide if they want to give it to the government, they want to do philanthropy, they want to do ESOPs, they want to do profit sharing, they can do all of that. But when we talk about ownership, they need to be on the same page. We can't have profitability, cash flow, um, come conversations in front of employees it, it's not a common goal for them they don't get the upside of that of that profitability so we want to make sure that some of my favorite ones is when you talk about family businesses is what is each individual's time actually worth now uh, it was funny uh, we drive an rv man i was outside dumping at the station I was elbow deep in stuff that we don't want to talk about, but it's part of it, but I'll do that at my job. Right. But when I'm doing my job as the chief revenue officer, the chief energy officer and coaching clients, I can empty trash just like anybody else and I'll do it. But when push comes to shove, I'm going to delegate that responsibility off because my time is worth more doing X than it is doing Y. And that's where people get into trouble is because like baby boomers, right? I'm, I'm 55. So I'm on the downs. I'm on the, the younger side of that, right? I'm a gen X baby boomers did everything. I don't need to train anybody. Uh, what do I need that person for? I'll just do it myself. I have to work 70 hours. So be it. Well, this generation that we're in is the next greatest generation we have. They're not going to work 80 hours a week scrubbing toilets. They're just not going to do it. So we want to make sure that we are doing our job, doing what is most effective for the business. And then you look, um, then we start getting into the nitty gritty of the business, right? Like what's, what's gross profit? What is net income? The dog just showed up in the background just because the dog, your dog. Yes, they are. The look, I love my animals. They travel with us. They are both laying on the couch. So, yes, they're they like, are we're part ready of the team. For our cameo. We're ready to give our input when you get there. Just let us know. We're on the. Yeah. You know, Renee or Heather, I'm sorry. It's so funny. My wife always says when I'm stressed, always since for 32 years, every time there is a lot of love in this room right now. Focus mm -hmm. on that. And the dogs have always, the kids, her, focus on the things. They're, they're my levity along with her. So, yeah, they had to do their cameo. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, so I I, I, wanna, I want you to tell me, because I want to also get to some writing tips as well, or writing okay. tips as well. And this is like, we don't have a ton of time together. So I would love for you to tell me the biggest mistake that family businesses do? Ooh, 
ooh, ooh, ooh. There what are. Would you, what would you, what would you like, or yeah. How would you help them get past that mistake or help them to see that? All right. Thank you so much for clearing the road. First, absolute number one mistake. Hiring a family member to do a job because they need a job. Ooh. That they might not be qualified for. That they're just. They're never qualified for. <laughs> it's just a warm body. <laughs> you're putting a warm body in a seat saying go because you're. Oh my gosh. Bobby's family. sister's cousin's brother, who is my third nephew, needs a job. Let's hire him. Yes. Yes. Bobby couldn't, can barely empty the trash. Let's put him in charge of sales. Don't do it. Yeah. Look, you are better off to have an empty chair than hire a family member that is unqualified, that you are unwilling to train. Because I don't care how much training you do. If you have somebody that's really analytical and good at numbers, putting them in a sales position is a really bad idea or mm -hmm. vice versa. The second thing that goes right after that is not having standards put in place for your family members. I firmly believe that when family members start, and I've seen it, I can show you statistics, I can show you um, family member after family member, is that said family member should never answer to their father, their brother, their mother. They should answer to somebody within the organization when they first start. This will allow complete clarity of, and we have to back that employee. Like, listen, if Bobby gets into trouble and HR is involved, HR is in charge. There's no saving them. Like, they can still be fired. They have to perform. Well, this and, brings up, this brings up a question ahead. for me, though. Because, like, when I think about family businesses that I know, or my family has a business that they, you know, but it's very small. There's not HR. There's not, there's no buffer. So I think what you're saying is like building your business up to have those buffers is actually a really, that, that should be a goal. It should be a goal. Look, at the end of the day, every business owner that I have ever talked to, family business owners, they are trying to create generational wealth, mm. right? What does generational wealth look like? Well, it's better than the last one. And mm -hmm. The hardest thing about that is creating generational wealth means you still have to put systems and processes in place to allow effective behavior and standards within an organization. I don't yeah. care if it's your sister, your uncle, your mother. We still have to have some sort of protocol so the business itself can move forward. Mm -hmm. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, okay. So flipping back to writing these tips out. So for everyone, you know, who's watching this, it's like, there are like, this book has a lot of information has like 15 steps. So you definitely want to get a copy of this book and we're going to share that out and share how you can do that. Um, but um, I think that, you know, and again, we're going to find out also, I'm going to share with you how to reach Andy. If you have more questions or maybe you have a family business and you want him to come in and, you know, do a little coach, a coaching session, or you want to, you know, talk with him on a consulting basis, um, you know, figure out how to connect you. Um, I think going back to the book side of it, the, okay, you, you had to shove this wealth of information, knowledge, and learning over years, shove it into this little book, into these pages. And if you were to give someone who's listening right now, who is like, I have a book idea. I have this, you know, yeah, I have the spark of this idea. I really want to do this. What do you have any writing tip or any advice that you would give to someone who's about to embark on the process that you took seven and a half years to get to, and now you're finally getting to celebrate the reward of that? Oh, that is a great question. That was the greatest learning I had. First thing is, don't believe your brother, sister's cousin who says, oh my gosh, you should self-publish. You can do all this stuff by yourself. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. First advice is, I could have saved six years by hiring professionals right off the bat. Hiring a publisher, hiring a PR firm, hiring somebody to help me get from what was in here onto the pages. You gotta hire professionals. This is not 
an easy task to do. It can be for some of you, like I'm every, really extroverted, so I can sit and talk all day long. It's putting on paper. But the same thing goes for that is hire professionals. Um, we, we had a great group of team between Holly, um, Atmosphere Press, and PR by the Book. Honestly, I got the most education in between there was by PR by the Book. When she started saying, oh, do you want to learn this stuff? Here's what you have to learn. As soon as she started talking about all the things I had to learn on top of doing my regular day job, I was like, I'm out. I'm out. No. But that was seven years in. That was seven years in. Hire professionals. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of information out there. I know there's a lot of misconception about, you know, how easy it is to write a book, publish a book, all the things. And I think that, um, you know, yeah, it, it does it is a lot more work than people think. And I think that if you are going to go the route of self-publishing or indie publishing, you have to be aware of all the things and you have to know where your strengths are and know, like stay, know how to stay in your lane and then farm out the things that you're like, nope, those aren't my strengths. I don't have the time for that. It's, it, it's worth me paying someone else to the thing that, to do the thing that they're really good at. Yeah. Higher perfect. Just like, you would never hire your brother, sister's cousin to come in and wire your house. Now I know that's an extreme or to give you brain surgery. This, this it, book is out there forever now. I mean, it's yeah. out there forever. And I, and I think the same thing can be said. I hear a lot of times people are like, well, my cousin edits my books for me or my like, and I'm like, Oh, it just makes me cringe. Cause you know, I, I, I have my own publishing company and I, and, and we hire out New York editors that are really good at what they do and they help, they really make a difference. Cause it doesn't matter this. I'm on my third book. Now, every time I get through that first manuscript draft of the manuscript and I think, Oh my God, this is brilliant. She's going to love this. And I send it off and my editor comes back. Well, it's blah, blah, blah. You need to do this. And I'm just like, yeah, you're right. And she's always right that she's, she's not afraid to be frank. She doesn't owe me anything. I mean, I'm paying her and I want her to be honest yes. with me. and it will make it better. And so I think that like this idea that we can kind of get around that expense is there are certain things you, you really can't trade and, you know, a really good cover, really good layout, really good editors, a really good team, a PR team, really good. Yes. You know, there, there's just so, oh, preach. so many things. So, yeah. Yeah, um, you 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 hit all the, the high points. Like those, the people that you just described are the people that helped me. And and I I didn't know you at the time, so I'm I'm sure everything is fabulous. But it's one of the things that I told the people right up front is my attention to detail. I mean, let's just be candid. Spellcheck was created for me. I can run <laughs> math in my head all day, every day. But when yeah. it comes to, I, I just. I didn't, I, English wasn't my suit. Judge me, don't judge me. But those folks that go through and they have to read each word, each syllable, they have to look at your grammar. They have to look at how is it laid out. Those people are worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They, the way that I speak is not natural to the way that I write. And I didn't know that until I hired professionals like you. Yeah, no, it's true. It's hundred percent true. Oh my gosh. Oh, and we're already at the end of our time almost. And it's like, it goes so quick. It goes so quick. And it that just does. that like, Andy, I'm, I'm so excited for you in this book. And I'm so excited for the people that you're going to touch. Cause I do think there are so much of our country, of our society, the fabric of our society is built on these family businesses. And not a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people are just kind of like, it's fine. You just do it. You get over, it. you just suck it up and do the things. But like, hopefully folks will reach out and get your book and like learn how to be, you know, find a way to do it better from your learnings and like in a way that is, um, helps everyone like achieve the most in all. And that's all, all I want. That's all I want. Look, call, call us, email us, Send us, we'll do a complimentary call with you, no matter where you are. My goal with this book is, yes, it is a business card. But for that one person reading this, let's just get right down to it. 
if you get one more dollar in profit, you get the next, another week of vacation, you're able to buy that car, put your child through college, you're able to join and scale. That's what I want. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the book's 16, $17. I want, I want more than that for everybody that reads it. Oh, that's well said. Okay. So I'm going to put the book back up, the cover back up, and I want you to tell me how can people find you? What's the the best way? The easiest way, there's two ways. First way is you can go to andyobrien.biz. It's my author website. Um, and there's a number of buy books here. So it has excerpts. It has some of the 15 reasons and it has a, a question and answer. If that doesn't work for you and you're an Amazon Prime person like I am, go to Amazon Prime, punch in WTF was I thinking, family business, it'll pop up, it'll send you right there. You can read the reviews of all those fine folks that have put it out there. That's awesome. And on social media, people can reach you. Yeah, we are at um, Andy O'Brien on Facebook. We are on um, Andrew O'Brien on LinkedIn, um, Andy O'Brien ATX for TikTok, um, Instagram, and threads. Okay, awesome. All the things, all the things that the young folks are doing nowadays. Um, and it's Brian with an E, not an A for anyone. Yes, yes, very much so. Yeah. Oh, Andy, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations on getting this book out. It's a huge achievement. And Hopefully um, it won't be the last, but also, you know, I hope that you really enjoy this tour and like reaching out to folks and that, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think what you're doing is really worthwhile and, and it's going to help a lot of people. So I wish you the best. Thank you so much for your time today in the spotlight. I am truly honored and I'm just an hour South of you here in Georgetown. So um, oh. I need to come up there and buy you a cup of coffee. Oh, absolutely. Or wine, you know, whatever. Yes. <laughs> yes. With, I, you just spoke to me in two languages. Thank you very much. Exactly. Yes. We'll do both. Those are my favorite bookends of the day, the coffee and the wine. <laughs> oh yeah. You got to bench coffee at noon and put, you got to get your um, wine on deck. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for joining me. Texas book talk. Um, hope you have a great rest of the tour. And um, we'll, for everyone else watching, see you back here next Wednesday where I'll be bringing another author to you, another story, uh, some more inspiration every Wednesday, 5.30 Central Time here on social media. So 